we go over to our man Basil Chapman. Now, Basil Chapman is the author of the opening call newsletter. It's fantastic. It's thorough. He's been making fantastic calls recently. Uh, one of the things I want to tell you, if you're not familiar, is that if you are a subscriber to opening call newsletter, you get access to a trove of educational lectures or webinars by Basil Chapman. Most recently, it was in July and it was sectors and stocks to look at coming forward. Uh, it is a fantastic time. And if you are a first time subscriber, of course, we have you protected. It is a 30 day money back guarantee in any event that it just doesn't work for you, but we're betting that it will. We're going to go over to our man right now, Basil Chapman. Basil, how are you doing? I'm good, Jacob. How are you? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. You there, Basil? Yes, I just uh, lost your sound, but now I've got it back, and now I've lost it. <laughs> Fantastic. I think we should be good to go right now. Of course, we had uh, Spectrum replacing nodes earlier today, so the internet is a little bit funky as it stands. But I know we're looking at the Dark News Index. I'm actually not familiar with what this is. I would kind of like to hear so your thoughts over the on the years, it. Over the many years, I developed this. Uh, this I, I, I titled it initially the Chapman Wave Dark News Cloud Cover. Uh, index, uh, but then people got confused with the candle called the, uh, a dark cloud cover. So I changed it nice. to the Chapman Wave Dark News Index. And basically, what it what it had done for years, not just years but decades, is every time we got uh, to a certain point in the Chapman Wave methodology, where I I I looked at it, the chart and it said to me, "Hmm, I'm getting a little toppy." I would look to see whether or not. There was a factor involved, which would be interest rates. And almost always, it would be interest rates, and then we would have a little dive down. And there was a technique where I, I talk about the internal low and the residual low. It's like an earthquake and an aftershock. Sometimes the aftershock is less than the earthquake. Sometimes it's the same. Sometimes it's even greater. So uh, you can see these lows here, IL, that's the internal low. A little high is the residual low. On the upside, just recently, we had internal highs and resilient highs back in September. We pulled back to the lows in October, and we got internal low and a residual low. And then I mentioned to subscribers that every Friday, I try to make it Friday if I can, I have an overview for subscribers, a video that I send out, which, which really covers a chunk of, of our positions, what we're getting, why we're getting. You spoke about my webinar that I had in that webinar. I'd spoken about specifically what we were going to try to do in the next uh, few months uh, right. in terms of positions that we wanted and sectors that we wanted, and we've been qu quite faithful to that. So in this particular instance, I had shown this recently, and I said, I think we might have made an internal high in the Dow, and that's uh, on the 15th of October at uh, 43,277. Let's see if we get a residual high, and then we got that. And this is the first time, the, this, the latter part of this year is the first time that I've been getting these signals based purely on my Chapman Wave notation, not just the interest rates, because rates have not really been a factor, because they've actually been rising, but the market, in a sense, has ignored that. Mm -hmm. So within that context... What we did is we I, we are long the down. We actually aggressively long from the August low, but uh, we've taken some profits. And I waited to see how the Dow would pull back. And you see that the Dow did pull back and has gone to what was the Chapman Wave inside track, another technique, repellent zone, which became a propellant zone. But now we're back to that. So I want to finish with this chart. Let me get out of that. And I want to go to another chart right here. And this is a chart that I showed uh, recently. I said, this is a black background of exactly the same chart. This is the uh, this is the Dow Daily. And the green line is the nine period moving average going above the 14, which goes green. And when it goes under it, it goes pink. And if you look at this MACD, the moving average convergence divergence, look how many times we went right to that line and look how it coincided exactly with a turn down in the general market. Basil, stay right there. We're going to come right back, folks. Just wait a moment. We're going to come right back with Basil Chapman. Welcome back, everyone. This is Jacob Shoup. You're watching The Tom O'Brien Show. We are joined right now by Basil Chapman, the author of the opening call newsletter. Basil, before we went to the break, you're looking a little bit uh, into the Dow Jones. Let's take a look at what we got yes. going on. 
So this is the black background, same chart, black background, but I'm using the moving average, the MACD, that's the moving average convergence divergence, yellow and red lines here. And I'm saying that every time we go close to this horizontal resistance line coincided with the Dow pulling back, and that showed that goes together with the chart that I showed you a little earlier. And look at the slow stochastic, exactly the same thing. That thick white line right across there, horizontal line at about 93%, that's where the uh, stochastic has been pulling back. So it says to me that raising some cash here is really not a bad idea. That's number one. And number two is within the context of the markets, what we're looking at here is something very uh, unusual. We're rotating through different sectors one at a time. And um, that's very important to identify uh, exactly where you are. So I was talking about this. I showed subscribers the other day that the Bitcoin, let me just get the Bitcoin, BTC. There we go. This is the, uh, I'm on the wrong chart. Give me one second. There we go. Okay. So the Bitcoin, had this particular pattern here in the monthly chart. It's like a cup and a handle pattern. Not one of my favorite patterns unless you're able to. If you're going to get a new position, you've got to get it in this handle way before it breaks to the upside. Mm -hmm. But this pattern is the same candle, uh, the same pattern that we have in the transportation index. Look, there's your cup and there's your handle. Right. So i I been talking about this for a little while now and I said that if you go to, I'll go, because most people who might not get the futures do get the, uh, they could put the Bitcoin Investment Trust uh, on their charts and to look at this GBTC. We once had this in the 12s. We had two positions. I thought one would be a short term and the other would be long term. We landed up holding them both from the 12s all the way to the 50s. Then we got out of it. And we never got back again. I missed the very low down here. But we recently, I love the chart and I said, I believe that we gained, we've made a halfway marker in the move down where there's a pattern that I call the falling X where you make lower highs and much lower lows. And then there's a chance that you could start to turn the corner where the tide has been going down. I'm just going to show this chart right here. I think this is it. Nope. Let me move that away. Okay, there's the chart. So it's this chart here where, you, where the price goes up sharply, then it stalls and comes down makes lower highs and much lower lows, and then it forms a base. And all of a sudden, what looked like a down chart starts to break above the downtrend line. I call it the falling axe because that's the axe handle. Mm -hmm. That's the blade, or I, to be more sophisticated, it's expanding, declining cone, too many words. But it <laughs> forms a cup formation or a V-shape formation. If it takes out the upper declining trend line, it can go one-to-one -to, -one to the upside. Well, lo and behold, We've, we did exactly that. We've taken out the resistance line. This is like a midpoint. And now the tide, especially with the MACD and the weekly chart, starting to, uh, to rally. I think we got the handle part of the um, Bitcoin extension in the monthly chart. So to go with that, we went to IB, IBIT, which is iShares Bitcoin. Uh, just recently, um, and we we're expecting this cup formation to have an equal number of bars on the left to the plumb line that I chose to that doji candle there, and that either uh, this week or next week we would hit the 42.99 level, and this would be the handle part of that huge cup and handle, and this could be a really nice extension to break to a new high, and if it goes above that A, above 42.99. It stars actually a leg B to the upside, and that would be very positive. So we are long, and we got this break to the upside of IBIT. It's up 4.7% uh, today at 4154. It's only in leg C in the Chaffin Wave. We're always looking for Ds. And this conglomeration, this pattern right here, is a fractal of the much bigger monthly cup formation. Right. So this is very positive and should be breaking out. So I've been speaking about this for a little while, saying I think Bitcoin is about, I, I'd spoken about it earlier on, saying that in April, that I think that there was a top and that it should make lower highs and much lower lows. And we'll see if it suddenly can turn the tide, go from going to low tide to starting to move to high tide. 
And I think this is what we're looking at. So I do like this. And I, it's in this whole thing of the market where there, it's rotating through the different sectors. Right. And even within a sector, there'd be stocks like a Microsoft, which we've been long for quite some time, which were doing nothing. And all of a sudden, it's gone to higher highs. Um, it hasn't gone to the all-time high. But this is that rotation that we've been looking at. And uh, as you know, I spoke to you about Robinhood. Yes. Uh, because... We, we do have a gold stock, but we th Robin Hood players tend to go to the um, metals and to the uh, to Bitcoin. I see. So I like Robin Hood as a as a company in terms of what I think that their clientele would be going for. So we've been Robin Hood since the 16s, and yeah, Robin Hood is at 28.11. Nice. So it's been <laughs> nice. a nice trade. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they even brought um. Uh, Political betting to the binary options, that's a new thing they added. So your your analysis on that was 100% correct. Yeah. I, I wanted to show you, you mentioned uh, Palantir. Yes. You know, I talk about this cup formation and chap formation is a particular technique that I use where you, the price on the left side can come down. And if you're able to identify the midpoint, the plumb line, I call it, you can have an equal number of bars going back to the upside. Or it's the other way around, from the downside to the up and then back down again. Well, look, Palantir had a 45 round number high in January, yep. second month off the IPO, that's Palantir Technologies. I chose the plumb line to be the exact low of 5.27. That was back in, I think it was uh, December of 2022. Well, the exact number of bars goes to either this month or next month to get to 45.00, a round number, uh, all time high. And what did it do today? It hit 45.07. So it's gone fractionally above that in exactly the same number of months. Uh, this is a technique I developed a long time ago. That's almost the same kind of plumb line that I was using for the um, for the Bitcoin. So this is very interesting because the technicals in the, in Palantir and the monthly chart are so very strong as it is in the uh, weekly. The daily says mm, getting a little toppy. But um, yeah, congratulations to you. That that's a beautiful call that you made. Oh, it's a, it's been treating me well. I, I enjoy Palantir for sure. And honestly, I want to like really say on on the hood call that you made, right? Because you know I'm a younger guy. A lot of us use Robin Hood, and, and uh, it just it was never something that I thought like, okay, this could really pull on. And and you were definitely in there around those lower sixteens, and it was just it's nuts to see how well. This stock has done since then. And it's staying well, power, I'll, too, I'll, you know. I'd, I'd like to just show you something. Yeah. You see the way this green nine period moving average above the 14 cross positive right there? Yes. On the 11th of September. And look, right up until this moment, it is still green, still way above it. So that's a real nice technical tool that you can use. I'll talk a little bit more about it in my show tomorrow at 10 o'clock, the Tiger Technicians Hour. Basil, thank you so much. We will see you at 10 a.m. Eastern Time tomorrow. Thank you very much, Jacob. Have a good evening. You too. Folks, stay right there. We'll be right back with Tim Orr.